Astro 2.0 was released a couple of weeks ago, and this framework is slowly becoming a must-have in any developer's arsenal. Let me explain why. In short, Astro has quite a few things going for it. First of all, it can optimize your site to load up to 30% faster by leveraging a front-end architecture known as component islands. This term refers to an interactive UI component on an otherwise static HTML page. By default, Astro generates every website with zero client-side JavaScript. So any UI component will be rendered to HTML ahead of time and then stripped out of all its JavaScript. This keeps every site fast by default and the Astro team promises that the JavaScript shipped to the browser can decrease dramatically. However, when interactivity is needed, you can clearly define such components as interactive islands and Astro will hydrate that part of your web page for you. If you want to find out more about rendering strategies and performance, you can check out the video I linked into the top right corner. The next big advantage of Astro is its support for a wide range of UI tools. So no more framework wars or endless debates about the best UI approach. You and your team have the liberty to add any of the following libraries in your project by simply running Astro Add. Of course, with great flexibility comes great responsibility. So use this with caution. You don't want to end up maintaining a project where you are using Vue, React, Svelte and Alpine just because you can. The third big advantage has less to do with the day-to-day -day work, but it still solves a major headache. Deployments and running in production. If you never had to worry about such things, consider yourself lucky. It was a major pain in the past, but these days it's pretty much smooth sailing. Astro supports both static output and live server output. We'll get back to this in a second. In the context of deployments, however, just remember that it provides guides and support to do seamless deployments in public cloud or even at the edge. Finally, starting with the release of its version 2.0, Astro has an open roadmap. This might be low impact in the short term, but believe me, it could do wonders for the framework in the long run. Let me tell you why. When you think about it, established tools such as React, Angular or Vue are popular not only because of their independent strength, but also because of the large, engaged community they were able to build around them. So having people involved and contributing to the actual development process will turn Astro into a tool more tailored to the community needs while increasing the adoption rate. Also, it is always comforting to know that the development team behind the project is 100% involved and dedicated to long-term success. For the last couple of minutes, you've seen me setting up and creating a basic Astro project, but now I want to discuss one of the major additions in the 2.0 version, content collections and type safety in markdown files. For a bit of context, one of Astro's main purposes is to handle content-heavy sites. Think of any type of product which displays large amount of search engine indexable information for their customers. Fully-fledged content management solutions such as WordPress are extremely popular, but in recent years, Gemstack-based solutions gained a lot of traction. In short, Gemstack is a web development pattern which relies on JavaScript, APIs and markup to build content websites. I know, this is not a novel idea, and yes, we are slowly getting to the good old days of HTML-first web apps. Anyhow, back to Astro, markdown files are at the core of its support for content, and in this new version, they were able to solve one of its biggest issues, the lack of type safety inside markdown. To see this in action, I created a content directory and, directly underneath it, a folder called course. This will be a content collection we'll configure in a second. We'll see the type safety in action in the intro.md and the javascript.md files. With the directory structure in place, let's run astro build and the .astro folder will be generated. This will keep track of all the markdown types for us. Ok, next I created a config.ts file and the first thing I'm doing is importing a couple of utility methods from the Astro content package. If you are running into issues with finding this package in your project, make sure you ran the Astro build command as I mentioned a second ago. Using define collection, we can specify the course schema. In my case, each course should have a title, a couple of tags and a preview. The Z stands for ZAD, a tiny little schema validation utility library pretty popular these days. So let's see the validation in work. In the intro.md file, if one of the mandatory fields such as the author is missing, I'll immediately be notified in the console. Pretty convenient, right? Well, this isn't everything. Let's jump into the index.astro file and fetch the content collection using the getCollection method. Then we can iterate over the data and guess what? You have access to code suggestions and IDE support to work with the markdown files. 
This is extremely convenient, especially when multiple content writers are collaborating. A strict contact structure is imposed right now, and any potential issues regarding undefined content are caught at build time. In order to showcase another great feature in the new Astro release, let's continue with the content implementation and create a page which can display the markdown content based on the file's unique identifier. Before moving forward, however, I'd like to take a moment and ask you to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you want to stay up to date with various topics in the dev world. Back to the code in a new Astro file, I'm fetching the content slug from the request path and then I'm using it to get the exact markdown content associated with the tag. Then I am simply running the render method and we now have access to the HTML content. However, if you'll check your console, you'll have a small surprise. Even though we did everything right, Astro asked us to do some weird configuration to make our dynamic route work as expected. The TLDR explanation here is that Astro uses a rendering strategy called SSG by default. This implies the framework knows ahead of time all the possible routes a customer could access. In such situations, Astro will be able to generate all the content at build time and, in production, simply serve that pre-rendered content to your clients with minimal effort and, in this way, achieve the best possible performance. In our case, since the slug is the dynamic part of our route, we should export a getStaticPath method which registers all existing slugs in our collection. With this small adjustment, Astro will be able to iterate over the content and create all the necessary rendered pages ahead of time as planned. An alternative prior to the 2.0 version was to switch the framework's rendering process from SSG to server-side rendering or, in short, SSR. In such scenarios, every time the customer accesses a page, the content is analyzed and rendered in real time on the server and then sent as a response. Clearly, this is a big advantage flexibility-wise, but you are losing some of the performance and efficiency of SSG. Before the 2.0 version, you are not able to mix together these two strategies. However, moving forward, you can have your cookie and eat it too. Because of hybrid rendering, you can enjoy the flexibility of SSR and, with a simple pre-render export, mark various pages for pre-rendering at build time and gain the performance as well. You'll find other small additions worth looking into in the 2.0 release and, I believe, Astro is slowly becoming an established solution for real day-to-day -day problems. Let me know in the comments what is your opinion about Astro and, until next time, thank you for watching.